Uh, this Eucharistic miracle that happened back in 750, uh, and as I said earlier, Lanciano in Italy. So uh, the priest who was supposed to celebrate the Eucharistic celebration, he doubted the real presence of the Eucharist, uh, that is transformation of the bread into the body of Christ and transformation of the blood, wine into the blood of Christ. So something very unique and very uh, supernatural that happened, the miracle that took place during the Eucharistic celebration where the body of uh, the bread turned into the real flesh so which is uh, uh, which also underwent a lot of uh, scientific uh, what to say experiments and scientific uh, or tests which they proved uh, uh, the report that was made from an expert uh, who said uh, the thin tissue uh, that appeared to be the flesh so which is from a heart so uh, this uh, like this we have a number of examples where the eucharist miracles have been uh, proved so here God, the Jesus does not necessarily have to prove his presence through these Eucharistic miracles. But as St. Thomas Aquinas <coughs> says uh, uh, in one of his writings that sometimes these uh, Eucharistic miracles do take place uh, in order to reveal the glory of God. So, yeah. But what happens in the every Eucharist celebration, which is not Eucharistic miracle, because which is not visible to the senses. What are the senses? Uh, we can touch, we can see. But the Eucharistic miracles are such, we can perceive with our senses. But what happens in the every Eucharist celebration, which is the change of the substance, not the accident. That's why we cannot call it as Eucharistic, Eucharistic miracle on an everyday basis. But we also have a number of Eucharistic uh, miracles, as I just quoted one of them right now. Yeah, yes. Actually, uh, it is so, God does not have to do it for us. Yeah, exactly. You know, He doesn't have to do doesn't it have for to us. Prove. He, doesn't, have he, to he prove. doesn't have to prove. Yeah. God has nothing to prove to you and to me. He's done everything. But just out of His mercy and out of His beauty and out of His love, He'll say, you know, every once in a while, He'll give us a reminder, He's saying, I'm still here. Exactly. <laughs> what I said 2000 back, 2000 years ago is still valid. However, I might not use this as an evidence to an atheist who does not believe simply for the reason is very often that um, you can just say, oh no, it's a hoax and um, you need to do more scientific testing and more this and more that. So I have realized uh, if I say this to someone who doesn't believe it doesn't mm -hmm. make as much uh, sense sometimes, but for those who believe uh, you know, those who really believe that that's the body and blood of Christ, it's like saying, God, I thank you for affirming my faith. I want to thank you for that. You've not let me go. Sometimes we can struggle, you know, even though we believe, some people are like, Lord, is it really? And I think the prayer we must make is like uh, in the Gospel of Mark, he made, it says, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. I believe, Lord, but just <laughs> a little bit help my help my unbelief. So that's a prayer we can make if you're struggling to actually see if um, this is the body and the blood of Christ. Uh, to add something to the Eucharistic miracle, uh, so people as uh, uh, when Jesus was going around preaching, the people of Israel asked him for a sign. So show us some sign. In the same way, even now uh, in this 21st century, most of us ask for a sign. So is it really you? So people start looking for some miracles. So miracle happened in this place. Some miracles... Uh, may not be true because uh, the church takes up the uh, responsibility of uh, submitting it to some scientific experiment and tests and all to prove whether it was authentic or not authentic. But one thing what we need to keep in mind is that if we focus too much on the Eucharistic miracle uh, that we have a number of them, so we are missing the mark. Yes. So true. we should not focus on something very material that is possible through the human hands, maybe testing it, taking the tissue of the flesh, uh, under a microscope. So we are deviating ourselves. We are mo looking more for the proof than for the mercy and love of God. So our focus should be God, not exactly the signs and wonders that are happening all around the world. Yeah. Yeah, the, the signs and wonders are just supplements <coughs> to our faith. Yes. The goal, the focus, the source and the summit of our life is what's happening at the Eucharistic celebration. Yeah. The Eucharistic miracles must not deviate us from the goal of our lives. The goal is to be with God, to be with Him at the Eucharist. Absolutely right, yeah. So. Yeah, and... Uh, uh, what is very much uh, common to all of these Eucharistic miracles is that, you know, when these experiments were being conducted uh, by scientists, uh, actually it's the same thing with Lanciano. Lanciano happened in uh, 750 AD. Uh, so, 750 AD, and now we come coming to another Eucharistic miracle which was very recent. That happened in uh, Legnica, Poland mm -hmm. in 2013. Yeah. So, when the tests were done, and even in between, so when the tests were done, uh, what 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 is very striking is that the scientists were able to find that and say that 
the the flesh that was taken uh, this is actually a for human heart human heart yes so it's a for human heart and not just a human heart but a human heart that was in agony it was in pain so and the next thing is that uh, both the tests showed that uh, the blood type was ab ab it's yeah. very rare yeah, it's very yeah, rare very actually say in the in the middle east, middle east. Uh, the the ab blood type is more common and jesus was from 